Hello and welcome back to Basically Chronicles Presents Next Gen. This is, guys, we're, we're, we're three issues away from 25 of these. This is 22. Why are we spending so much time with you? Um, that's a very good question. Um, we have an entire YouTube page dedicated to that. I think between all the games we've done, there's at least 100 on there? Or somewhere awfully close. We need lives, guys. Yeah, what have we done with our lives? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, see, you can't really talk because we know you don't have a life. Ah. I really don't have anything to say to that. Oh. It's, am it's amazing how many just overall years that we've actually been doing this on a... Oh close to weekly basis. Considering it started as sort of a, hey, let's get everyone together, let's, you know, play a, a game for, like, you know, a month or two, and it spiraled into almost three years at this point? And several games. And several yeah. games. Several game systems. And for some reason, out of all the games and all the stuff we've played, how did our mascot become an otter? Because I'm an artist? Yes, exactly, that's it. Fair. Fair enough. But anyway, we can get to more reminiscing more characters every two weeks. <laughs> Fair. Fair. So, um, there'll be plenty of time for reminiscing later. I'll have to go back through all the YouTube videos and get an actual count. Um, I'm going to try my best to see if I can get this to at least a 25, because 25 is a good... Solid round number. It's a good anniversary number. It is. It's kind of odd. It is a little odd. Kind of silvery. <laughs> but anyway, enough about the reminiscing and the horrible jokes. Uh, this is your uh, Bay City Chronicles crew. Um, I don't have any fancy, fun, crazy introductions like I normally do. Uh, because instead uh, of thinking of that, we spent the last 10 minutes uh, simultaneously both uh, wishing Dark a happy early birthday and also shaming him for not sharing his cake with the class. So we've got a Dark Falls, we've got a Chameleon Ice, we've got a Crimson Avix, and we've got an OPT lawyer. I am your host, TGE, and this is going to be Bay City Chronicles Presents Next Gen, Issue 22, The Devil and the Details. And since it's been a little while, uh, we will hit that previously on Bay City Chronicles Prince Next Gen button. Um, so, who remembers what happened, or am I going to have to do it previously? That's you. Okay. So, previously on Next Gen, um, y'all had a conversation with Gianna's mom, who is a bit of a pill. Claims to want to do everything she can to protect her daughter. But as I said, is a little bit of a pill. Um, was very standoffish, hard to work with, but did give you guys some information. And a deal. And the deal she made was that if you were able to stop what Preston Powell and the rest of the Br and the Brimstone House, what they were doing she would give you a chance to save Alex. After that, you all woke up to a wonderful news story that was being broadcast on Good Morning Bay City about how Gianna was the daughter of infamous super criminal Dreamweaver. You all watched all this information at Vincent's palatial estate, where he also planted a bug on everyone and discovered that uh, Lord Tiberius Goldwell King, Preston Powell, and a third party were in discussions to basically run some sort of massive smear campaign against all of you. And then we discovered that in addition to having a palatial estate, uh... Vincent also apparently has the armory from Men in Black. <laughs> um, so we, we faded into the scene uh, at the foot of Stormbreaker Tower, 
which was basically kind of like the scene from Avengers where there's everyone running in one direction and all the hordes and hordes of alien creatures are coming at them. Although instead of hordes of hordes of alien creatures, in this case it was hordes and hordes of devils. And um, we faded to black in that scene, and uh, you all sort of had your weapons and stuff from Vincent's uh, armory. But the most you know, noticeable thing was, we're not sure how, because he's a, just a projection of energy, but Sassy was completely ramboed out with like crisscrossing bandoliers, a couple of like Tommy guns. We're not sure how he got that way, but, but that happened. Because we so, say so. Yeah. I still want fan art. <laughs> well, talk to the artists. <laughs> so, uh, on the cover, um, okay, apparently we, he's going to talk to an artist. Uh, Duck will be joining us back in a moment. Um, I'm going to assume under the guise of an animal hit a button, because that's always what I assume. Anyway, there we go. Dark is back. Uh, we're going to blame it on the dog because we're going to do that. Anyway, on the cover, uh, we have sort of like the picture of the, the back silhouettes of all of our heroes as you can't t descriptively tell what's coming at them. It's just the outline of Stormbreaker Tower, the, the outline of, of, of buildings, and then just them standing in the street. You can tell who our heroes are, even though they're back silhouetted, just because of heights and, and costumes and articulations. But they are all just facing down what just appears to be a wave of shadow with all different styles of eyes. There's some red eyes, there's some yellow eyes, and it's just a wave of things coming at you. So we're going to open our comic on that same sort of page. And then we're going to do something a little bit different here. You guys are all extremely powerful or extremely resourceful. So these are all, these are devils mostly made to do exactly what they're doing in sight mass pen. So what's going to happen here is instead of running through a battle with just, you know, minion popping, I've got a custom move that's going to allow all of you to narrate how you are going about wiping the floor with this horde of devils. So, I want you to think about how you're going to, using your individual abilities, powers, and whatever else, how you're going to go ahead and fight these devils. We will then roll the move, and then I'll give you each the floor to narrate what happens, how you're doing it, based upon the roll results. So, I will show you the move when I am done reading it. When you take out a horde of devils as a team, if you do it in hand-to-hand -hand combat, roll plus danger. If you do it in a flashy display of your powers, roll plus freak. If you save innocent bystanders while doing so, roll plus savior. If you outsmart them, roll plus superior. And if you just happen to get lucky while fighting them, roll plus mundane. On a 10+, plus, describe how you look totally awesome taking down part of this horde, and choose two of the following. Market potential, clear condition, Add a team to the pool, or the public is impressed by your display. On a 7 to 9, choose one of the above effects, except you cannot choose the public is impressed, as you did stop the horde, but there was a little bit of collateral damage. On a miss, you do help stop the horde, but at a price. Choose one of the following. There is massive collateral damage to the surrounding area. Take a powerful blow as the public opinion of you and your team sinks lower than it was. Or, bystanders get hurt. Choose a prominent NPC in the city, or the GM will choose you, choose them for you, who is severely injured by your failings. They blame everything on you, and they won't let you forget it. Mark guilty, insecure, and expect public bash backlash at your mistake. There is the move for everyone to see. Hmm. This will be fun. <laughs> kind of like a choose your own adventure on how you want to murder devils. So do we all roll separately? You are all going to roll separately. You're all going to get your own little cutscene of narrating how you take out these devils, and if you do it awesomely, okay, or womp womp. 
Okay, I guess the first question is who's leading us. Um, this isn't a this isn't a dangerous uh, foe, so no one's leading. This is just a, a role. Everyone's doing a role. There is no entering into battle as a team because this is not a dangerous foe. This particular thing is not a dangerous foe. Demons aren't dangerous foes. Come on, Teach. These are I a horde of minor more, devils. I think the more dangerous foe is the fact that we're doing this in the public eye when the public was just you know given a morning broadcast saying how horrible we are. Indeed. <laughs> it's emotionally dangerous, Teach. Are you lobbying for team? Yes. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll... Okay, I can... Justify it to me and I'll give it to you. I just gave my justification for it. All right, who's leading? Flo's not leading. He's just arguing with the uh, GM. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, why is he looking backwards and who is he talking to? So yeah, figure out who your leader is and all that. Like I said, justify it to me and I'll give it to you. So I guess... I can lead out of Vincent, I suppose, since I outfitted everyone. And I got us to this point. All right, I'm down with that. Okay. Vincent, do you have influence over everybody else? I have influence over Charlie. You definitely have influence over Flo because you're from this existing timeline. Yep. The question is, do you have influence over Gianna? Not on my sheet, but I'm going to have to check with Sharon when he gets back. I can check Jamie's sheet. It does not tell me. So we'll have to check on that. Um, while we're doing that, what is everyone's purpose in this fight? So Vincent's purpose is he wants to prove himself to the team because he's still the new guy. And he wants to uh, show that he's not just an arrogant ass. So he can actually back up what he says. Okay. Charlie. I'm legitimately trying to remember how I was feeling at the end of the last whenever we did this, but I think... Uh, angry at Preston Powell for bad-mouthing Gianna yet again. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think he's just here to just beat the living crap out of people. Okay. Flo. Flo sees this as something that, you know, if he doesn't do it, I mean, obviously the world isn't in the mass chaos where, where he's from, so obviously the demons can't win. Okay. Those are tangentially related enough in the I want to stop them all category that I can give that to you. We'll wait for Gianna to get back for that. Um... I'm going to give you right now, there is no way you were ill-prepared or off-balance. You're all outfitted to the teeth. <laughs> Does anyone mistrust anybody else? I'll say no at this point. I mean, they all did show up at your house and have your popcorn. I showed up unwillingly. I never said how, I just said you did. I guess I don't. I guess Charlie doesn't mistrust anybody. No, I mean, I know that at least in this instance, we're all fighting for the same goal. All right. So I'm going to assume Gianna's um, reason is that. Uh, oh, well, I can ask right there. Okay. Once uh, we just once we do the proper order of glasses into headphones into microphone coming down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so two questions for you. One, what is Gianna's purpose in this fight? Gianna's purpose. Uh, her purpose is to save the city 
can also like to prove that she's not a monster, like he said on TV. Okay. And Gianna, does Vincent have influence over you? You know, I think he. You know, I don't. I don't actually see his name on my list, but I might have just forgotten to read it to write it. Vincent, do you have influence over me? We are asking you because we don't remember. <laughs> I thought I did, but I'm not positive. I assume you did. Okay. Because like when you started the game, you gave influence to us. Okay. So in that case, it takes a lot of the fun drama out of this, but you now have five teams. Wow. So, oh, I didn't say we're using the team. I have no intention of using the team. <laughs> okay. So who? we're going to go ahead and roll this, and then we will resolve them in narrative uh, in order which makes which I arbitrarily choose. So um, first things first, uh, you can choose how you want to take them out based on the move. Just remember your narration has to reflect that. So roll A. Who's rolling first? Oh, good. All right, flow with a nine. These aren't like, so we would have checked the, uh, the... Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm check If you have the, uh, Appropriate condition marked for that. Uncheck it for this roll, or just add two to your roll. Okay, we get nine, eight, seven. So, uh, Charlie, go ahead and Thank complete you. the the straight either way. <laughs> I'm just saying, roll a six or a ten so you can complete the straight. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, that's oh. actually a five, but it doesn't matter. Oh. Oh. Snake eyes! Ouch! Oh, so mark potential. Unless I mean, you guys did lobby for five team. <laughs> it's a five. You can't. You can't really bump that up. I don't think with any of our skills. You can. <clears throat> Here's what I will say with that one in particular. Because you rolled with Monday, which specifically says if you're getting lucky while fighting them. If in narration, people narrate into their narration how they sort of took out part of your horde, we will apply the team accordingly. Okay, so, so if we include right. Like, so Charlie, Charlie in there. will go last. We'll actually go in order of how it rolled, uh, how you rolled on the screen here. So, nice. uh, we have got flow. Okay, so you said the demons are descending on the city, right? Basically, they're just sort of coming in. Kim, you played you played Kingdom Hearts three, right? Yes. You've beaten Kingdom Hearts three, right? Yes. The Horde of Shadows in the Keyblade Graveyard? Okay. That style of coming out, everybody. Okay, so... Flo just picks out a several several few. Like a bunch, I would say, maybe 15 or so. I'm assuming there's like probably yeah. around 100. Give or take, yeah. Okay. So he picks out about 15. Um, and starts running up the side of the building. Okay. And as he nears the demons, he jumps off the building and pulls out his katanas and sort of steps on two of them, stabbing them in the back with the katanas. And as he steps off the second one, he sort of jumps in the air and sort of goes running up the the next eight with uh, with his pistols out, shooting each one as he goes up. And then he creates a portal, or actually creates two portals, grabs one of the demons, does like a somersault in the air, throws it through the portal, it comes out of the other portal into two, two more demons. I love that so much. 
That is a flash display of powers. Vincent, how are you outsmarting these things? So Vincent's going to outsmart these by... <coughs> Excuse me. Well, they're basically just mindless waves of idiots. So uh, Vincent is going to attempt to run at them with his mech suit and just con absolutely confuse them just by A, the blinding speed of the suit, and B, just kind of running in circles around them. So they kind of like, not only go try to hit him, but they start hitting each other as well. <laughs> stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Gianna, there is hmm. something I really hope you hit in your description here, so please, please don't let me down. I mean, it's got to happen. So what we see here is we see a kind of panels of Gianna kind of perching on Sassy's back as, like, Sassy's, like, two-fisting these barreled guns, like, just rawr, rawr, rawr. And she's, like, shooting as well. Like, and she, like, kind of, like, aims really carefully at, like, one demon that's coming up. And she's like, I got it! I got it! And she pulls the trigger on her gun. And let the reader remember, last session, she was given the noisy cricket. She was! She was. <laughs> so, she fires that gun, and this big explosion comes out. And it rockets her back really quickly. And so she's just kind of flying back through the air. And luckily for her, Mr. Moth actually appears behind her, catches her, and she's kind of like kind of in the air. And he actually like has his wings flow back and does a big sweep. And she blows it, she blows this big um kind of gust of wind towards Charlie. And she's kind of like saying, Charlie, use this to sweep up the variety of demons and give her friend an opportunity to make the most of what he can do. Okay, so we have had a couple of, uh, of people narrate into helping you out. You got demons teleported on top of some demons, and you got thrown a gun. What kind of gun? So I missed the first thing I had to go to the music restroom. Sorry, I missed it. Well, what that, what gun did you just throw him, Gianna? I didn't oh, throw him a gun. Oh, I, just threw him, throw? I was like throwing goodbye a giant gust of wind to help like amplify yeah, what he could say, do. Yeah, oh, okay. I thought it was a gun. My bad. Yeah, no. All right. Okay. I'll try to remember what Charlie even took out of the. The answer is whatever you wanted it to be. Right, yeah, but I, I'm sure I said something, but I don't know what. Uh, oh, rifle, right, okay, so... so no, these are all laser weapons, by the way. What did you say? Yeah. <laughs> so he has his hunting rifle. That's right, it was a hunting rifle, because I'm like, that would be a thing he would have done, like, with his... Yes, okay, right. Right, uh, okay, so... Um, he has hunting rifle, you know, and he's... He fires the gun, and he's clearly missing every shot because it's one. It's been a while, and two. You know these guns aren't from 1996; they're they're much more modern. He's not used to them. Um, so Gianna's wind kind of helps pu basically push um, enemies into his bullets. <laughs> I love that so much. So, and then like it flows portals, kind of the same thing, like. He he like he fight like Charlie fires and and flows just like yeah boom no, there, portal there portal right yeah <laughs> I love that so much uh, Vince oh. is probably oh uh, shoot Vince what did you do when oh well, you only need to narrate two of them so. okay okay that's fine well still I thought it'd be fun so anyway oh, yeah. Well, uh, Vincent used his speed, so there'd probably be some kind of... Okay, they, they, so, ran, they ran into the path of the lasers. Not, yeah, so so one of the things you may have done is, like, you slam, like, like I don't know, body check one of them into another one of my bullets because I'm missing it so much. And so so that's how he gets stupidly lucky. 
That's fantastic. Now, now I just imagine Flo like jumping from demon to demon, just like throwing up portals to. <laughs> to <laughs> <collect. laughs> this is so fantastic. <laughs> because that would totally be a flow thing too. Right. It's like a light gun game. Like here you go. Hey. Yeah. Flo, Flo is just running off demons and looking at Charlie, and he's just playing laser tag with the demons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. These are laser guns. I forgot. Yeah, they're yeah, they're MIB oh, that, guns. Yeah, that's 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 even more of a reason why Charlie's like totally not used to the recoil or whatever from it. Recoil from that. Yep. So as this is all going on. Um, you all do notice that a small horde of them is gaining quickly on uh, one of the group of slower bystanders. And, um... Uh, hold on one second. And uh, as it looks as if the horde is going to uh, descend upon them, and uh, I rolled in secret for this, so you didn't know I was doing this, um... There's just a mound of explosions as more demons just go flying backwards. And in the remnants of there, as the smoke clears, you, well, at least two of you see someone you recognize. Hunter, right? Is it a hunter? It is totally in full costume. Nice. In full costume. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. He looks back, grabs a bag, throws it to Vincent and goes, you forgot these, and then start shuttling people out towards the escape route. Vincent looks into the bag and grins. <laughs> and kind of like looks around to where everyone is and looks at like the nearest portal and reaches in the back and tosses a pair of uh, sunglasses to flow. He tosses a pair to um, both Gigi and Charlie as well before putting his own on. So, despite Charlie's inability to shoot a laser gun properly, um, he does... Like just catch these glasses, like he just like holds his hands, boom, and then just flips them right on. Flo looks at the glasses, snaps off the arms of the glasses, and drops them into the back of a demon, and then places them over. So literally in the comic, the only thing, the only difference you see is the two like white slits where his eyes are are not covered. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> And meanwhile, Gianna, like, we just see a panel of her, like, catching the glasses, and we just see a panel that just kind of transitions to her wearing the glasses, looking all confident with Sassy, and she's totally looking the wrong way because she can't see a thing. And somehow Sassy and Mr. Moth also now have glasses on? Absolutely. Just giant <laughs> shades on Sassy, Sassy and Mr. Moth. We have to have a separate panel of, like, Sassy reaching down and just, like, boink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Sassy reaches down, looks for a second, looks up, a boomerang comes flying in with sassy-sized glasses, just grabs them and puts them on. <laughs> <laughs> You're not sure how that happened? Just that it needed to. Just that it needed, needed to. to. <laughs> <laughs> I've left literal tears in my eyes right now. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> Okay, so we have some resolutions to take care of. You all get to pick one. You cannot pick the public is impressed. Yeah. I'm marking potential. Okay. I really think I should be able to pick the public is impressed. But I will probably mark potential. Don't worry, the public will be impressed because, as I said in the group chat here, I secretly wrote for Hunter and he got a 12. So the public will be impressed, mostly because of Flo's ridiculous display. So you are getting that benefit because apparently my, my dice decided to at least be somewhat nice tonight. Uh, Gianna's going to clear a condition specifically insecure because they look awesome right now. <laughs> they do. <laughs> and Vinny. Uh, he will mark another potential for now, because I don't have any conditions to get rid of. Works for me, and you still have the three team to play with. So, you're actually going to get a fourth team, because I'm not going to get potential to an NPC. <laughs> that would be selfish. So, we get this probably seven to eight page long montage 
of everything happening. If this was like, like an actual shoot, we just get the long rolling camera of this all happening and Flo finding his way into every scene because it's Flo. <laughs> Like, even if he's just in the background with a little thumbs up, he's in every panel. So, after this hall clears, um, there's, you know, some collateral damage. Uh, you know, whether demons falling in, like, mailboxes or a couple of fire hydrants. Like, there, there's definitely, like, you know, New York summer with fire hydrant water spewing everywhere. It's not a lot of collateral damage, but... It is enough for certain people in the crowd who already don't like you to be like, see, they're a menace. Thanks, JJ. <laughs> Who's JJ? J. Jonah Jameson. Preston Powell. Oh, right. <laughs> hey. He just looks like J. Jonah Jameson. So after this is now cleared, you can see up at the top of Stormbreaker Tower, there is a giant, swirly, red and black looking evil thing. Lightning, like red lightning crackles across it. It's spreading these dark clouds over the city. That's probably something bad. <laughs> what do you do? Guys, that's not mine. <laughs> Good. I, I, I was gonna ask because I was, I, I, I was thinking maybe it was. I wasn't actually thinking that. It looks kind of bad. Yes, it does, Gianna. You're, that's very, very good. Is it the dark or the swirling that gives you that impression? Probably a mixture of both. I think it's more the swirling than the dark. And maybe the hell spawn exiting from it? Yeah. At that, Vincent kind of like taps his glasses to like zoom in on the thing to see if he notices anything out of place that you can actually see from the ground. I mean, you can definitely see, like, there's definitely a portal forming up above there. Basically, like, there's the top of the pointed tower you see in the picture on the on the uh, on the roll twenty, and like it's the point of the tower, and then the swirling portal. Um, the way that the building is constructed, and you know, <laughs> astute readers of Bay City Comics will know this because of you know, because no matter what, no matter what world you're in, Stormbreaker Tower is still designed the same. Because it's the one, it's it's the it's the feature. So um, we'll know that yes, there is the flat helipad on top, but it's got built up walls on it, so you can't see it unless you're above it. So unfortunately, you can look up there and you can definitely yeah, there's something going on, but because of the nature of how it's constructed, you cannot see what's going on on that top floor helipad from the ground. I'm blocked, guys. I can't see through that thing. Do you want to try to... Folk, can you get up there and see if you can do that manually? I can. Now, do I want to? It's a totally different question. Jonna has a Mr. Moth kind of lean down, lower his wing. It's like, I can get us up there. Yeah. So, as you were having this discussion... You start to see, you know, the people who had ducked in the alleys are starting to show up, and people are starting to sort of look and do the whole pointing at that, and, and there's the murmuring, and there is definitely some discussion, and, and um, you guys sort of hear, like, the murmurings behind you, and some of it is like, oh, it's dangerous, they, they definitely shouldn't be doing that, or there's no way, they, they, they go up there, they get killed, like, there are people, there are, there are the three schools of thought that you're hearing. Most of them are in the in the sort of, that's a suicide mission if they go up there. But they're not saying it in the, we don't want you to do it. They're saying it in the, we're scared because you're kids kind of thing. There's a small minority basically saying that, 
Of course, they're going to go up there. They're the ones who brought this on us. This is all their fault, basically blaming you for everything. And then there's a couple who, a couple of people who, you know, watched everything that happened with the hordes and the hordes of devils. And they're just like, looking like, yeah, it is dangerous, but they still need it. They can do this. So you can hear the mixture of all three of those. The sort of in the middle of the that's crazy and dangerous is most of what you're hearing, but there is bits and pieces of all of it. Mm-hmm. So somebody kind of believes in us. I'm not really worried about them right now. Kind of more worried about this thing opening up. We need to get up there. Vincent just kind of nods and looks over at the moth. Oh, Charlie looks over at Flo. It's like, like, portal up there? All of us? Sure. I mean, otherwise we're going to fly in a giant moth, and, I mean, it's not bad, but it's also not the most comfortable thing you've ever done. I was just going to take the elevator. I mean, that's just kind of slow. Which, if you'd like, we could change your name to slow if that's what you wanted to, you know, to to do. When he says that, Flo just opens a portal underneath Charlie and drops him on the on the helipad. As he, as he starts to fall, he just kind of smiles. Like, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> 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 so Charlie's up there. I'll explain what you see in a minute. How are the rest of you getting up there? Oh, Flo, are you providing access or? Oh, the portal's still open. Okay. You just drop Charlie through it. So you just gotta run through it and tumble through the portal as well, and try to have Mister Moth kind of like pirouette in in behind her. Vincent kind of just runs and jumps in himself. Flo closes that portal and opens another one that he can walk through so he doesn't have to jump into one. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sazzy's just there at the ground looking at the small portals. He kind of looks at the guns and he starts shooting more demons. <laughs> yeah. So, when you get to the top, you see sort of, because the, the biggest feature, of course, at the top of this helipad is where the spire comes up. And sort of surrounding the spire, you see, cloaked in energy, a circle. And inside this circle, you definitely see uh, someone, or a couple of people that you recognize. Um, Vincent, you will not recognize any of these people because you have not seen them before. But the other three most certainly do. Uh, standing in the circle, looking like he's sort of going full Emperor Palpatine, conducting whatever this is, is Lord Tiberius Goldwell King, flanked by his two cronies, Hellhound and the Brass Knight. Huh. Oh, no. At your audible, oh, no... He stops his conducting for a second, looks, and has that really creepy, evil old man smile. I see that you've made it up here. <laughs> Took you long enough. Okay, two seconds, I want to punch him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, trust me, it gets worse. He thinks an entire meal is nothing but chicken nuggets. It was kind of terrible. Now, now. Isn't that what teenagers these days eat? What's no. The, what chicken nuggies and chalky milk? No. I'm surprised you're still here, Mr. King. Didn't we kind of destroy your house? <laughs> Even Charlie looks over at her like that, like, I, I wasn't the whole house. You simply destroyed the facade at the top. All the real fun happens 
underground. Even deeper than you all went. <laughs> I don't want to know what his definition of fun is. Mm. Oh, you know, nothing more than summoning an entire hell plane onto yours, causing hate and wanton destruction, reshaping the world into my name. Why? Because it's fun! It doesn't well, seem like, all that exciting to me. Well, it's like, <laughs> one second. And he opens a teleporter, goes down, pulls the two katanas out of the backs of the demons, and then goes <laughs> back. <laughs> okay, Jerome. Well, well, that's a very... Huge trick. You know, if I wasn't several times immortal, I might be scared. But, but wait, <laughs> several times immortal. So does that mean at some point you're not immortal? I've made several deals with several eldritch monsters. At some point, they might come to claim it, but right now they're all asleep because, well, anyway. Detail. If we send him to the sun, that would be an eternal hell for him, then. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Can you do that with your portals, Flo? Unfortunately, no. It has to be somewhere where I can actually physically portal to and wall. Oh. I, I, I'm not fireproof. I know. How about you teleport him onto a rocket that's going directly into the sun? And you know exactly my point. I like you. You won't. Trust me. But you at least have common sense. Okay, so that makes one of us here. <laughs> I have foresight. Anyway, as I said, I like fun. So! I will tell you right now, if you attempt to try and portal through this barrier, brute force your way through this barrier, look cute your way through this barrier, he looks at Giano when he says that last one. It will go badly for you. But, I do like fun. And, if this plan fails, I'll just break it out a hundred years and do it again. But, as I said, fun. So, I am going to give you all a chance to stop this! This is going to like stage fright when we have a game I was going to say, yeah, this, this sounds amazingly familiar. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, this is not anything where there may be a bomb planted in a carnival or anything like that. That's amateur hour. Oh, no, 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 no. See, this is a very highly sophisticated ritual that requires three points of magical content. I will tell you, this tower is smack dab in the middle of these points. At each one of those three points, I have at least one of my subordinates. If you want to get through to here to stop me, all you have to do is go to one of those three points, stop them from doing their portion, it will lower this force field, and then you can come in here. And we can have our little tussle. Okay. Just one? No, oh, there's two. Well, there's it's a triangle, so if you take out one point, you no longer have a triangle. There's two things. Oh, that's fine. Just... Well, we only need to take down one of them, then. Okay. What... I mean, if you want yeah. to take down more, I won't stop you, but tick-tock time is of the essence! I really am wondering if you aren't who this stage fright is, because you sound exactly like him, and you say the exact same things. So, wait a second. Uh, Mr. King, if we stop one of these points, does that make the portal itself weaker, or does it only make the barrier weaker? Now, why would I tell you everything? Because you're a very nice and fair man who gave us chicken nuggets? I did give you chicken nuggets. I, I did am chicken nuggets. You were, up, you were too busy up on the roof flirting with Lady Lou. You could have saved some for me. Or, or better yet, you could have sent her up with chicken nuggets. I'm going to join your team if that was the case. 
Is that all it's going to take is chicken nuggets? No. A pretty girl with chicken nuggets, though. Well, if that's the case, then I mean, I can probably have Luna. Oh, it, it, it's too late. I already know your. I already know your ruse. Plus, I mean, you've annoyed me already. Fair. I have been told that, mostly because of my wardrobe. Anyhow, as I said, you've got. Uh, You've got one of three voices to stop. Go ahead. I've told you where they are. Well, as much as I can tell you. We're in the middle of the triangle. Go find them. Or watch your world fall into the inevitable hellscape I want to make it. Your choice. Ooh. I have a thought. And I'm going to do this. Okay. Gianna's going to charge her burn. All right, charge it. Oh, I got rid of a condition. Oh, my fool! How foolish I was. Okay. All right. So, mark a condition and hold three. Okay, we're gonna say angry because she's not happy at this guy right now. We're gonna hold three. And she's going to actually use one of those burns immediately. To move to any place that she chooses within the scene, breaking through any barriers or restraints no, in your way. That, that is fine. <clears throat> so describe how it looks as you manage to get inside of this barrier. Well, what I picture to have happening here is that Giona's focusing really hard on Lord Tiberius, and she actually kind of collapses in on her like little cloak and leaves it behind, and a sort of portal opens up behind Tiberius as she comes riding out on the back of Sashi with a giant wind-up punch. Okay. To sock him really, really hard. Roll to directly engage a threat. Okie doke. And... Can I spend a burn for Reality Storm to make this... How, how are you punching a Reality Storm? For Sassy? Because he's a construct? Okay. It's a destructive burst, essentially. It is a destructive burst. Okay. So, so a big powerful Sassy punch. Here we come. It's... So roll using my power, so roll freak. There it is. Okay, kaboom. I imagine at this point, Charlie and Flo are just kind of looking at each other, astonished that neither of them got the first punch. Yeah. Actually, disappointing. Yeah. And she's riding on the back of Sassy. This is Frax! Because you just snake eyes. I did. So, the first question I have. Are you spending the second burn on Reality Storm, or is there going to be collateral damage? She's not concentrating hard enough on preventing damage, because she oh. really wants Alex back. Okay! Yeah. So! <laughs> first things first, go ahead and mark potential. Yay! Then, this is the following uh, series of events. You burst through this barrier. As he said, if he wasn't expecting anyone to, to, to go through the barrier, because you know, there's some consequences to mixing magics. We'll get to that in a second. But you come in through, and you and Sassy are both winding up ready to go, and you are so focused on him that you forgot he was flanked by two other dudes. Oh, yeah. So you're going to punch him, and then as you go, just a giant brass fist just comes into panel and just cold cocks Gianna right off a of sassy. So first things first, I need you to take a powerful blow. Rightfully so. That's going to be a big number. I mean... Yep. 
Okay. So, that is a 10 plus. What are you choosing? She loses control of herself or her powers in a terrible way. I, I was hoping you were going to say that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, you get cold cocked by Brass Knight. And you fall off of Sassy. And you both actually get thrown kind of into the middle of this oof, of demonic, devilish m magic. So, as this happens, the overflow of your magic from the punch from moving into this barrier. There is a lot going on here. And basically, you've got the magic of a hell dimension, plus the magic of a dream dimension. And they are kind of merging into one very chimeric, magical baby. And basically, it's what's happening right now in the Gulf. you got two big old powerful storms vying to see who's going to be the most powerful storm and just going to merge into one giant superstorm. That's kind of what happens. So between you overflowing the portal, the, um, the barricade, falling into the portal, and getting punched, there is a massive, massive explosion of energy as this shockwave just comes poof, out of the, the, por the barricade. It sends Tiberius flying. It sends the Brass Knight flying. It sends Hellhound flying. It's also going to send Flo and Vincent and Charlie flying, because that is how powerful this thing is. And good news for you, there's so much magic in here that it caused the portal, and all the magic in it to collapse in on itself. Oh, sweet. The bad news is all of that hellscape energy got absorbed into sassy. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so, Tiberius and Brass Knight and, uh, and Hellhound get blown up against like one of the air conditioning vents. The other three get blown into in, like, the door wall. But no damage, just sort of narratively. You're just sort of sitting there like... Blah, blah, blah. And then, out of the grab of this portal is, you see a giant, devilish-looking, with disgusting, like, long, sharp nails. And it looks like a Neander... Like, not a Neander, but it looks like, a, like a, a Yeti hand. Just one. And then two. And then pulling itself out of this is... I'm going to let you describe... What does Sassy look like when he's merged with a Balor demon? If I remember correctly, Balor demons have like horns and stuff, right? Yeah, they're the, they're the ones most people think about when you think of Balor demons. Cool, right? okay. <laughs> so, what we see here is usually Gianna Sass Sassy is very like cartoonishly happy and such. Got a big happy grin. So, this version of Sassy that comes out, like, instead of the pleasantly white kind of brownish fur. It's a deep, dark red. And in face of, like, the happy, usually bubbly, smiley face, there's a giant row of, like, sharp, somewhat disfigured teeth. And the cartoonishly happy eyes that he has that are usually really big are still really big, but they're almost like open sockets where when you look behind them, you just see horror. And then on top, there are these little horns that look kind of cute and pleasant. But that's about it. <laughs> so you all see this. Tiberius sort of shakes his head, looks up at what's happened, realizes that the plan he was going for is kerfluid, sees what has been created, smiles, looks at his two goons and say, we'll try again in a hundred years. Let's go, boys. And... Brass Knight, like, Hellhound transforms into his dog form. Brass Knight scoops Tiberius up, 
like cradle carry like this, and they just start leaping across, and they're out of there. <laughs> so Flo, Vincent, and Charlie. You see sassy Balor Demon climb out of this hole. What do you do? So Charlie's going to look over at Flo and be like, okay, I know you don't normally like to talk necessarily about the future, but is this something you remember from your history books? My history books don't mention anything of a massively huge nightmare creature. Oh, that's... And as you say, massively huge nightmare creature, you just get the... Oh! Oh, man. And you make that comment, he looks directly at you. Okay. This is confronting a dangerous threat as a thief. Who's the leader? <laughs> Can I attempt to use a tactical genius at this point? Um, or just not considered a plan per se. Um, but, 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 but I need to read the exact wording on that. So give me a second. Um, unfortunately, with this particular thing, no, because this thing doesn't have a plan. Had Gianna not blown everything to holy hell, you absolutely could have because there were there were definite flaws in Tiberius's plan. But this is no longer a plan. This is just pure chaos. Otherwise, I would say absolutely. The mistake in his plan was clearly not un un clearly underestimating the anger of a 12-year-old girl. 13. 13, yeah. Right. 13, yeah. My bad. So with that, I'm going to use um, Logical Angle to um, support Gianna. GG, I should okay. say. So uh, Vince is going to go over to her and kind of help her to her feet and let her know that even though this monstrosity is basically sassy, that we will overcome it together as a team. And kind of like try to get her spirits back up. Aww. Right. Roll logical angle. So basically, roll superior instead of mundane with that comforting support. Yeah, I'm trying to get my shield. on. Is Gianna even conscious at this point? She's probably trying. Oh, yeah, she is. Okay, good. She is. Um, that is technically a seven. Because you have influence over jams that you do not add. So, on a 7 to 9, it's a competent support. So, if you open up, you can either mark potential, clear condition, or add a team to the pool. If you do not open up, though, Vincent has to mark a condition. Gotcha. Um, well, Gianna kind of groggily gets to her feet. She's got a lead against Vincent. And she's just kind of, kind of, yeah, shift labels, What's up? Sorry, shift labels, not add a team. I got that wrong. My bad. Gotcha. Carrie. Uh, she's going to look over at Sassy, and she's going to actually be kind of crying a bit. Um, as she just kind of says, I'm sorry. I, I'm, what if they're right? That... The stuff that I can do, is this it? And is that? Oh, it's my fault. I'm so sorry. No, Gigi, it's not your fault. And like I said, you have us. We will get you through this. I don't we, we, just have to, we just have to take that out. And then he'll go back to being the sassy you remember. You think so? Do you think so? That's the important part. You have to believe in sassy at this point. He's still in there. You just got to bring him back to the surface. Yeah, he is. Oh, we'll get you, okay. Sassy. Okay. Gianna. We'll go back to the team move in a second. Gianna, do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Roll flat plus one. Okay. Seven. Okay. On a seven to nine, your words reach the person or being in question, but at a cost. Choose to either give the being influence, which would be the Balor demon over you, 
Oh, not sassy? Or okay. Mark a condition. Take plus one forward the next time you try this trick. And that's all I'm explaining right now. Okay. Can Vincent mark the condition for her? In this particular, for this first one, no. So just to make this clarified, this will be giving the Balor Demon influence or will be giving Sassy as the Balor of Demon influence? Sassy would be giving the Balor Demon influence. Okay. Uh, Got to do the marking condition okay. and adding plus one next time. Okay, please mark that and we will continue on from there. She's going to okay. mark it for eight. Now, back to that first question. Who is the leader? Also, I do want to point out, this was not at all what I had planned. <laughs> As you break out the team move, when you confront Sass, you turn into a demonic being. Uh, I'm, I'm modifying comfort of being that no longer exists. Okay. <laughs> On the fly. <laughs> I mean, Gianna's the one who ran in, and she kind of started this whole thing. Right, but the problem has changed significantly. Well, yeah. It's still Sassy, I don't know. So Vince kind of just looks at Gigi and wills her to try to reach out to Sassy again to see if there's any kind of shred of the Sassy that she knows still at the surface. I guess if she knows him best, she would probably lead on that aspect. Okay, so Gianna uh, is the leader. Do you have influence over the rest of the team? Uh, it says I do, yes. Okay. What is everybody's purpose in this fight? Uh, stop the giant Balor sassy demon. Okay. I mean, pretty much the same. Okay. Gianna, you're the one I'm wondering on that. Gianna wants to save her friend. Okay. Those are ambiguous enough difference that you're not going to lose a team, Whew. but you're not going to add a team. Oh. I believe I can remove one, though, for I think you are all off balance a little bit. You think? <laughs> I literally had to be picked up from the ground. Yeah. Right this point. yeah okay. I, I would 100% agree with that. And we have determined that you all do trust each other. So, I mean, you only have 16 to play with. Yeah, I was going to say that. I mean, yeah, we'll make this work. And, Gianna, the way that the reaching out is going to work is... You get it. You'll be able to reach out once per condition marked on Sassy Valor. Ooh, okay. So you've got already have the one with no conditions marked. Gotcha. So you all you've had that little talk, and he roars, and and he even though you reached out and said something, he stopped for a minute, looked, and then his eyes are focused right back on Charlie, who was complaining about his breath. So Charlie, you have a giant. Demon sized, demon spawned, evil looking, creepy Sasquatch in front of you. What do you do? So, I'm assuming giant, so giant, said giant Sasquatch gives the another, like, loud growl at him. Yes? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, when he, so here's the comic panels. Like, you see him do that, and you've got, like, the wind, like, you know, the wind from his breath, like, blowing Charlie's hair back and whatnot. And then Charlie takes a breath and does the exact same thing back to him. Um, he's just going to attack him using his sonic powers. All right, roll for your engage threat. This is a great idea, considering I bet negative one for this. <laughs> hey! hey! All right. Hey, nice. So seven and I choose one. Um... I can create an opportunity for my allies. Okay. So, describe this opportunity before I describe how you get smackery. Um, what it basically is, um, thinking because he's going to be, like, abs like absorbed with me, um, you know, that, that scream, it says sonic power, so maybe it deafens him a bit, so he doesn't hear, like, what's, like, what's coming from the next attack or whatever. Okay, so you just at him. And he sits there and he's just holding his ears and just screaming in pain. But as he's screaming in pain, 
is this still a demon? Demon has a big old tail. So he's screaming in pain, looking, and then watch the bleeping tail as it just comes and smacks you upside the head. Ah. Please take a powerful blow. Oh, God, okay. <laughs> Okay, describe how you weather the blow from a giant demon tail. And remember, to mark potential. Yes. Um, so, like, so he comes, like, the tail's coming, and Charlie just kind of barely notices it off the side of his head, or on the side of, you know, the peripheral vision and whatnot. And at the very last moment, he, like, like throws his arm back and kind of snaps his fingers, and the sonic, like sonic wave kind of thing um dep like temp tempers the blow enough where it's just kind of like a like a tap to the back of his head it's just like oh okay so in the span of him like doing this he also starts to jump up and down being all kind of cranky and you can feel the whole building start to shake nothing crazy yet but that definitely loosens some supports vincent that just happened. What do you do? So Vincent is going to think back to the time at the movie theater that he had actually hacked into Sassy. And, uh, oh, that's right! Oh he's going God. to uh, start this fur furiously typing the last commands into his gauntlet to try to see if he can get balance Sassy to start smacking itself to try to wake it up. <laughs> Roll to unleash your powers. It's a freak roll. <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay. So, you can either mark a condition, and this will be a, a, a normal effect, or uh, it's temporary or unstable, and I will tell you how. I'll do temporary unstable, just given that the situation that might not be... Nope, that's perfectly fair. So you start typing, typing away. And then you see that he's got his hands on his head and then starts pulling away. And you can sort of see, like, you know, like, the, the, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? So he's got one hand that's like, like ready to punch himself. And the other claw is holding it, holding it. And he's trying to, and he's trying to. And then the tail comes up and smacks him in the back of the head a couple of times. Smack, 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 smack. And then he just sort of... <sighs> So he, then he, he, he guts the fist, and then he lets go of the fist to grab the tail. And as he goes to let go of the fist and grab the tail, his head dodges out of the way. So he punches into his tail and then starts rolling around and crashes into the AC unit, destroying it. Oh, no. Not the AC unit. Not during the summer. You monster. <laughs> That's Thomas Casey. You could probably replace it in like two minutes. There's probably one being airlifted there now. You're right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was like it was like a, a, oh they're fighting on the roof. I might as well order a new AC just in case. Yeah. Hub, <laughs> can you take care of that? <laughs> exactly. Which you're not sure if it's a hub or not. You haven't met the. You haven't met right. a hub. <laughs> anyway, um, Gianna. The only thing I can say is. That just happened. So here's the thing. If I try to get through to Sassy again, like, like, do I just make that roll again or something else I should do first? No, yeah. narratively explain what you're doing and we will go from there. Okay. So Sassy's just kind of rolling around like crazy right now after like injuring himself, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, John is going to try to shout out to him to, like, get a hold of yourself, while also, though, exerting her psychic influence that she knows she has to be able to kind of rein in her best imaginary friend. Okay. Roll. Uh, 2d6 plus 2. Which, in the case, in the case of the narrative, is flat plus influence plus the plus one forward. Okay. Just to keep all cards on the table for what the roll is. Makes sense. Oh, gosh. Okay. 
your rolling has been absolutely atrocious. Oh yeah, I got to mark uh, potential for this stuff. That's cool. You do. Okay. On a miss, your words ring hollow. Choose to either lose influence over Sassy. Sassy, not the Bower Demon, yeah. lose the influence over you. Or take a powerful emotional blow. Why would him lose the influence over me be bad? Because of the mechanics and how this works. Okay. How this works. Note, if there is any, at any time, there was no one who has influence over the being, <gasps> and he has influence over no one, he is lost forever in the empty. Oh no, sassy. I... And in this scenario, the only two things are you have influence over him, he has influence over you. That is it. She's going to take the powerful emotional blow because she cares about her friend. <laughs> this is going to be a... a I'm preparing you now for the use of this later which potentially can save Alex. <laughs> it's training. It is training. No! Okay. What are you choosing? I got a 14. How did I roll snake eyes and then I rolled whatever? <laughs> <laughs> because the dice know. It was six and a five. It was a six and a five. Okay. Um, where do I go? Where do I go? Okay. So, I actually think I'm going to choose the, uh, the two from the seven to nine list. And she's going to give ground because she's trying to, she's getting a little bit too close to her friend because she's trusting him. Yep, I, I, have, I have the way for that. Okay. And the other one's going to be provoking a teammate to foolhardy action, I think. Okay. And it's going to be saying to uh, Vincent, um, I think I'm getting through to him. Uh, try to see if you can hold him still. So Vince just kind of nods over at Gigi and starts just furiously typing into his gauntlet again. Do I need to roll to... provoke for that or no? Um, you do, because it does say provoke a teammate to foolhardy action. All right. Sorry, just a second, Vincent. Okay, that's about par for the course. Okay, so. I mean, I have rolled a zero, successfully rolled a zero before, so. You have successfully rolled zero. So, um, you don't have to do that, Vincent. In fact, you kind of don't hear. As she thinks she's saying this to you. And what well, you think she's saying is because, as you said, you were reaching out with your psychic connection. So mm -hmm. you thought you were reaching out psychically to Sassy. You were reaching out psychically to the Balor Demon instead. So as your words rang hollow, you're not sure how you can hear a smile, but you hear the Balor Demon smile, and then you just feel this psychic pressure on your forehead. And you can just tell that you need to get out of that connection or you're done. So that's you giving ground as it basically telling you, back up and your brain go boom. Okay. So with all of that, Charlie, you just basically saw Sassy hitting himself. Then Gianna walking up to it. Then looking petrified and sort of backing up a little bit. And, yeah, what are you doing? Um. <laughs> well, uh. I guess while... Balor Sassy is uh, distracted by all of them. Uh, 
Charlie's going to, um... What is he going to do? Um, he's going to go ahead and, um... He's going to attack Sassy with his powers and try to figure out what he's going to do. He's going to, um... Oh, okay. This is this is so dumb. I love it. He's going to try to jump on Sassy's back and, like, scream right into its ears to just completely throw him off balance. So you're going to try and whisper sweet nothings into his ears in the way Charlie whispered? Sure. <laughs> I will say right now, if this succeeds, this is awesome. If it fails, I have a name for it. Uh, what is, would this be directly engaged then? 100% directly engaged with threat. That's kind of what I figured. Oh, and sure. that's kind of what I figured. Um, there is team. There is sure. six there team. Is in we have so much team, we only need to spend one. Right. That might be a good time for... I think Giada's a little bit occupied. I'm not sure if I can spend team or not, but... Vincent certainly can. You have to refresh me on what that means. I've Basically, never actually used it. By spending team, you can narrate how you're helping a teammate with their attack. And by spending a team, you add one to their role. So if you spend a team and narrate how you help them out, that'll go from a six, which is a miss, to a seven, which is a partial hit. Okay, so I will uh, go ahead and do that. Um, so since you saw that uh, hacking connection, um, which, uh, let me see if I can actually do this. Give me one second. You're a hacker. It's part of your ability suite. You can do it. I know, I know. I'm, there's something else I'm thinking of. Okay. Um, I think this applies here. I'm going to DM it to you on. Oh, uh, yeah? Uh, to answer the question, you're not in this particular case. Like when it gets to your turn, you certainly can. Uh, yes, yeah. So, uh, Dark, when uh, to answer your question from you just to, I don't to type it. Um, when you get back to your turn, if you want to do that, you absolutely can. In this particular scenario, you're just sort of helping out Charlie right now in the moment. So after this, when we get to your turn, if you want to do that, one hundred percent. Okay. So I'll so uh, use. Uh, the connection I had uh, with it to have it smack itself a couple more times to try to give Charlie the window to actually do what he was planning on doing. Yeah, so basically, like, you try and just, like, go at it. It, it goes to, like, reach you off your, reach at you and slam you off its back. At the last second, it sort of stops for a second. You're like, scramble on up there. Choose one. Uh, he's going to resist her void blows at this point because uh, he's on Sassy's back. I will say, if you had missed horribly, I was totally calling this a careless whisper. <laughs> so you just go up and you're like sassy but it's Charlie so it's boom right boom boom so yeah that happens <laughs> it's just now it's even it's even more crazy Even more crazy, angry, mad. And she starts running, and that the entrance doorway to this top, that whole brick tunnel has now been smashed. And you feel the building shake and wobble a little more. We're going to destroy Stormbreaker technology. This is great. Jensen, you are <laughs> Leaving our mark on the city. Okay, it's fun to do picture. I know, right? Okay, so I'm going... Is it my turn now? Or is it... It is your turn. Okay, so I'm going to actually use my uh, scientific insight at this moment. Given that it is Stormbreaker Technologies, and given that Vincent would have the uh, power to see that it is usually probably armed on the exterior... 
he is going to attempt to use the scientific insight to hack into the defense systems to see if he can uh, get some assistance from the building itself. All right. So scientific insight is when you uh, assess the situation and your field of study is directly relevant, you may ask a single follow-up question. So assess the situation is a superior role. Okay, that is a fantastic roll. So, I'll assess the situation. Uh, on a 10 plus, ask two. So you need to ask two questions, then you get a follow-up question, and you get plus one on rolls while acting on the answer. So the questions you get to ask are the following. What here can I use to blank? What here is the biggest threat? What here is in the greatest danger? Who here is most vulnerable to me? And how could we best end this quickly? Okay, so I think my first one would be uh, what here can most help us out. I think it was like the second one you said. Yeah, Yeah. what, ha what here can I use to help? So you specifically said you were trying to hack in for weapons, defense systems, and all that. And, well, what here can I use to do that? Well, um, the defense systems here, there are pop-up turrets, laser turrets, on the roof. So all you have to do is hacky, 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 and then you get the pew, 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 pew. Sound, effects may, sound effects may or may not be included. Secondary question would be, uh, would that end this quickly at this point? Uh, the best way to end this quickly, um, the best way to end this quickly is to figure out how to reconnect the connection between Sassy and Gianna. And or find a way to sever that connection between the Valor Demon and Sassy. That's the best way to end this quickly. Will the laser turrets help? You're damn right they will. They're laser turrets. <laughs> but the best way to end it quickly is to basically go full on uh, horrible anime and power of love this. <laughs> and you get a follow up question based on the fact that you're doing some hacking here. So that's your follow up question. And that doesn't have to be from the list. That could be whatever the heck you want. What could Vincent say to Gigi to reestablish that link? That's not a question I get to answer. Gianna, what words of encouragement do you feel needs to be heard right now? Because as being hacked into... This is a bit of a, of a stretch on a question, but because he's kind of hacked into Sassy, which is really weird, um, it kind of applies. So what can be said to Gianna right now to bolster her confidence to try and reforge that connection? I think what would actually really work right now is saying something along the lines of she didn't forget her friend Alex and she's still going to save him and that she can save this friend, too. And doing one will prove the other. So Vincent's going to kind of like assess the situation again and look over at Gigi and kind of let her know that he has an idea and that he's going to do everything he can to stun uh, Sassy, whatever, Bella Sassy. And that once he's stunned that his guard may be down, and that might be the time to express uh, exactly what Sassy means to her and exactly how much that she means to him. Okay. So in which case, I'm going to uh, hack into the turrets, set them to stun, not kill, and try to uh, weaken Sassy Valor. Okay. So in this case, you're going to roll to directly engage a threat. With a plus one, because of the uh, assess the situation. Okay, that's a good uh, roll there. So you hit pick two. One of them I'm going to kind of pick for you because you Typically said you were trying to create an opportunity for your allies. 
which is exactly what's doing. The other option you pick from R, blah, blah, blah. resistor avoids your blows, take something from them, or impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Uh, I think it would be uh, suppress the opposition to uh, try to um, immobilize okay. it almost and okay. take away its power. So you managed to do that. You're setting up AG for this opportunity. You're, you're surprising it. It's definitely not expecting to be like fully physically hacked here. You've basically turned this thing into a marionette from the physical side, which is fine. However, this is still a battle demon, and it still has some psychic power, so it can't move. But it can still sort of glare at you, and you just feel this sharp, searing pain in your head. Psychic power isn't necessarily its biggest uh, ability. Gianna got the powerful blow because of the big connection her and Sassy have. For you, I just need you to mark a condition. Gianna, you now have an opportunity. I do. I will. I will mark um, angry. Seems about right. Debating something. Okay. Yeah. Thinking back and forth on it. Um. So Sass right now is, like, he's paralyzed by the lasers? No, he's paralyzed by, uh, he was basically turned down by the lasers, and he's been shadow or marionetted by, you're not sure how the heck Vincent managed to hack into a manifestation of your magic? But he's just that good. Basically, yeah, he, he's just that damn good, exactly. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh... Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to do it. Why not? Okay. Do you know I was going to walk up uh, to, to Sassy after hearing Vincent's encouraging words and like having her friends help pin him down? And she's going to use her moment of truth. Okay, so, moment of truth. Do you have the playbook open in front of you? I, well, it's in my character sheet, actually. Okay, so read the moment of truth. And once you are done reading, narrative control shifts to you, and I get to sit back, relax, and put my feet up. Huh. Your, mind, your mind's eye opens, and you can see the world around you like never before. You can control it at will, with ease. Of course, warping reality tends to have ramifications down the line. But in your moment of godhood, how could you possibly be worried? Knowing that that's what your description says, take it away. So, Jonah walks towards Sassy, and she reaches out with, with her um, the power of her mind and this connection that's been forged. And with having, like, her friends at her back, the portal that was open in the sky, this giant melding of the dreaming and the demon realms, um, she actually opens up what appears to be a sort of rift in reality that splits right down the center of Sassy. And this rift is actually a rift directly into the dreaming. Oh. And it's pulling Sassy directly out of the Balor and separating the Balor on his own and trapping the Balor kind of in this nowhere realm of the dreaming itself. So it's out of its own demonic power realm. And Sassy is actually kind of where he's safe. And with this Balor here in the Dreaming in a realm that he's not at all, like, safe in, Gianna actually kind of steps forward into this rift, and she just kind of, like, feels herself trembling as she kind of looks down. And all these sort of, like, tentacles drop up, crabbing up out of the bottom of the rift. And these tentacles actually look very familiar to anybody who knows mythology. They're actually Kraken tentacles. So... The sort of Kraken Beast comes up out of the ground in this Rift of the Dreaming and envelops all of this Balor and just suffocates it and drags it down into this void of nothingness in the ground. And after this is done, 
Uh, Sassy just kind of sitting there. He's looking back to his old self. He's actually got a bit of a faint glow about him as Yenikai walks up to him and she hugs him. And actually all of her manifestations that we've seen so far come and they kind of embrace her in a big warming hug. And there's this kind of glow that happens that eventually kind of settles and it leaves a sort of slight doorway into the dreaming. Uh, that's kind of like sitting up there at the top of, um, say, at the top of Stormbreaker Tech. As she just kind of whispers into there, Mother, I have control now. And I'm going to take my friend back. And normally... I would want to do more exposition, but that is a fantastic fade to black moment. I was going to say, like, that it has to end this whole thing now. It absolutely has to. So, we will run over the mechanics of how the rest of that moment will work in a moment. But, on behalf of the entire crew here at Bay City Comics, thank you all very much for watching. And on behalf of OPT Lawyer, Dark Falls, Crimson Addicts, and Chameleon Ice, I am TGE, reminding everybody to, of course, as always, keep handling.